Havana's been dating Arnett for about four years. Um, she called me that afternoon because they had gotten into a fight. Two weeks ago, we had an argument where it got pretty heated. She wanted to leave. She didn't want to be around me at the time. She said she was going to get all her stuff and go move in with Maya. I said, yeah, whatever. It's whatever. Do what you got to do. She leaves. I go out to the bar that night. I, didn't, I had no idea what she did that night. And Anita and I went to go pick her and her stuff up so she could come stay at our apartment for a while. We decided to have a girls' night out, so we all went to a bar, Havana, Anita, and I. We met a guy at the bar. We all just were there having a good time. I was the designated driver. Um, there was a guy there that was buying us drinks. Havana was really messed up by the time we were leaving the bar. All four of us left, the guy, Anita, and Havana, and I. Went back to the apartment. I took her upstairs and Havana and I went to Anita's room. So we lay down in Anita's room to watch a movie. A few minutes go by, she's dozing off and she's like, I have to go put on um, pajamas because she was so dressed in the clothes she was wearing all night. From what I heard from Maya that she was so drunk that she wasn't even speaking in full sentence, slurring every single word. Maya had to tell her to go put some clothes on. I realized after 30 minutes, Havana still is not back. I leave my room to head to the living room and I'm in like mid hallway and I can see like a good portion of the bed and I see the guy that Anita's hooking up with laying on the bed facing Havana. Havana's on her back. We just moved in. I feel like this was a messy situation so I was upset and I left. The day after this happened, I got a call from Maya saying like, oh my God, brother, this, that, this, that. I walked in and I seen Havana's like, what are you talking about? I called Vanna back and she's super flustered like, I don't know what the hell is going on. I just talked to Maya. I was furious, but as I get the story from, more of the story from Maya and Havana, it starts to piece together like, now that makes no sense that she would do that. Somebody took advantage of her. The next day, I have several missed calls from the bulk of them. First, I call Havana when I'm ready to talk and she just, I'm expecting her to answer the phone like, you know, I'm sorry, like kind of like apologizing for the situation. And she's just like, oh, hey sis. So I'm confused, like, like you don't remember last night? She's like, no, I don't, what are you talking about? I'm like, you don't remember having a threesome? She's like, what, what are you talking about? Starts to get a little more frantic. And I kind of explained to her what I see and her first reaction is why would I leave her there? Which is a valid question, I just wasn't, I didn't know that it wasn't consensual. You know, we're all adults here. In the moment when Maya told me she left, I was furious, like, why would you leave my girlfriend there with them? We might have been broken up for the time being, but how are you gonna leave your best friend there with no help? You're just gonna leave her stranded, and this is your home. It, she don't have a key to this. She, she obviously, you knew she wasn't speaking in full sense, she couldn't give consent, so how would you, how could you see something like that? and walk away from it. If I find out that Havana's lying, my heart's gonna be broken just because things that she's aware of of my past, this is a very touchy subject for all of us, actually. And if I find out that Anita's lying, kind of the same thing, I'm gonna be very hurt and she also won't be welcome in my life anymore. There's no way she would cry rape just to try, just in fear of losing me. She knows that I'm here for her no matter what. So there's no way she would just scream rape because we watch so many shows about this, like Steve Wilco's our show. We call this, this, she ain't gonna come on here just to embarrass herself. Uh, Havana, you believed that you were raped by your friend's roommate. Tell me what happened. I was raped by my friend. Anita is my friend as well. We've been friends for two years. There's been no conversation or any, anything that she would get that we would ever have sex. So why she chose, when I'm not speaking in full sentences, to have sex with me has really been, I've been having anxiety attacks. I'm not able to sleep. I went from weighing in the 130s to the 120s in under a week. I am not okay. And nobody wants to take this story seriously because they hear you're messed up. You, so I'm just, I'm not being looked at as a, a victim, and I was. I am a victim. I would have never had sex with Anita or this random guy, ever. We were in the bar, and this guy that had been buying us drinks all night, he started with buying all three of us drinks, and then it moved to just buying me drinks. And 
I was heartbroken. I was trying to have a good time. I got really messed up. The last thing I remember was being on the, they have a small dance floor in this pretty small bar, and he brought me over a drink. And that's the last thing I remember. And uh, Anita and uh, Maya, how long have you been friends with them? Maya is, to call her my friend, is the fattest understatement. That is my sister. We've been that way since seventh grade. Her mom is my mom. My mom is her mom. Our siblings are each other's siblings. So you're very close with her. I would die for Maya. Okay. Um, how, how did you become aware that you had sex with the, Anita and this man? I woke up at 6 a.m., fully clothed, unaware anything happened to me, not feeling like anything happened to me. I went out for a girl's night, and I didn't think I would have to watch my back with the people I went out with. So it, it was never a thought when I woke up that something happened to me. You literally disgust me. You literally You're disgusting. disgust me. You're a predator. Who you has sex with somebody me. who's not speaking full sentences? That's clearly What about our relationship case. these last two years has ever given you the vibe that you would ever be able to touch me? Not one. So when you wait, you wait for the one night that I go and have a girls' night with you two, and I'm not speaking full sentences, to have sex with me, that makes you a predator. She believes because of that night that you and this man raped her, what do you have to say about that? I honestly think that she's lying. First of all, she's sleeping in my room. I'm sleeping in the living room with this guy. She makes it seem like I came into my room. She came out to the bed, took her own clothes off, and laid down and initiated thing, everything herself. The thing that Havana never told anyone you're lying. Shut. Continue. The thing that Havana never told anyone, that before we went out that night, she was drugged off of two ecstasy pills. She didn't uh, say that part. Everybody here knows that. They know. Well, I'm the just making know. sure. The hospital I'm, knows. The police don't so, know. So, so speak on something you know. Okay. Obviously. So you were under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Yes. OK. But even if, OK, and that's the deal, just because somebody does drugs and drinks, that's not giving consent for sex. And, exactly. and that's not... Exactly. The guy and I had already had sex. So we're sleeping. And that's when Havana comes in and sits on the bed. And this is her exact motion. She says something. I open my eyes. And she's taking her pants off like... Whoa. Whoa. What is that? Do it. <laughs> there you go. So, so you're kind of sleeping, right, with this guy? You're just <laughs> both asleep? She comes in, and what does she do? She takes off her pants, throws them on some boxes that are in the living room, because when we were moving Maya's stuff, we didn't want to move it into the bedroom. Right. She throws her pants on there, balls up a cover, and lays on his chest, and that's what woke him up, is because her hair was in his face. OK. And then what happened? So then we just, like, start rubbing and, like, filling on each other, and then that's how we started having sex. OK. To you, did she seem aware of what she was doing? Of course. Like, she initiated it. Like, she woke us up, you know what I mean, out of our sleep. What did you see that night? Okay, first, can I get off topic for a second? Sure. We've been in each other's presence for too many times since this happened. Act like you have some sense. Stop pulling chairs. Act like you, like you were raised right. That's not okay. Second, I feel like all of this, like, I'm so frustrated. Like, I just moved into my apartment. I moved away from mess to get, like, avoid all this, and I'm standing on the Steve Wilco show. I'm not happy about this. Right. I'm a preschool teacher doing my best, leaving work, and all I did was get attacked by her. I just got attacked. By Havana. Yes, attacked, and I'm trying to do my best. Right. So I just have so much to say at this point. Do you feel as that far, you did anything wrong? I'm not taking responsibility for anything, because at the end of the day, you're both adults. We're all the same age. I might be more mature, but I'm not your mom. <laughs> we leave the bar, all four of us. The guy comes to. Vanna's still wide awake. She's like, let's go drive around campus to see if there are any frat parties. I'm already knowing she's messed up. I'm not looking for frat parties. I'm just going to drive around to sober her up. So we drop Anita off and the guy right. off to the house. We're driving around for a good 45 minutes. We pull up in front of my apartment. Havana's like, maybe if you feel like it, we can go drive around and see if there's parties. I'm like, OK, you know what? You're spent. We're going upstairs. We're going to bed. Like, we just did that. So I'm like confused. 
So I take her upstairs. We go in Anita's room, because like I said, my room's packed with every with me and Havana stuff all over the sure. place. So we go in Anita's room. We're in the room. I put on a movie, turn off the lights, like I do to the kids at my job, like to make them fall asleep. Right. She's dozing <laughs> off. She's dozing off and everything. I'm like, okay, this is working. Then she jumps up like, oh, I have to put on pajamas. So I keep watching the movie. First of all, it's a movie that I wanted to watch in the first place. So of course I'm into the movie. It's bring what it on. Movie? Bring it on. <laughs> So and that's my dear, okay? So I'm like, I'm in this, I'm who's, in this who's movie. In, who's in that movie? I mean, it's the new one, so I don't know none of them. There's a new one, 2017. Oh, it's a new one. Yeah, okay. so I'm like, you know. Yeah. So I'm like in the movie. About 30 minutes go by, I'm like, okay, I know I'm not tweaking. It's been a minute, where is Havana? Look in the hallway, the door is cracked. I see the light coming from the direction of my room. So I get up, go in my room, there's no one in there. So I start walking towards the living room. So I get like mid hallway, I can see part of the bed. I see the guy laying facing Havana and Havana is laying there. I see I, the reason I don't stop nothing, I'm stuck first of all, like, okay. Were you shocked? Shocked, yeah. like, I'm like hesitating, like, and then when Havana and the guy look at me, I'm like, okay, you're making eye contact with me at this point. You're not, there's no, nothing being forced, like, y'all no, see me and keep no, doing what like, y'all doing. Me. Thank you, how do you look at me and keep doing what you're doing and expect me to help you? I understand I'm, where you're coming from with that. You, you see two people having sex, but you see Havana having sex with somebody she just met that night just had a breakup with me, or not even really a breakup. So why would, why would you assume that she would think that was okay? Why would you assume that she consented to that? If you knew she wasn't speaking for the sense, y'all was just laughing at the, laughing at her, rolling on the ground. What sense that make? Were you in a physical confrontation with her earlier that day? We, she came at me attacking me, like mad at me because I was, called her a bitch. She, I mean, sorry, called her a B word. She, you call her a bitch. She doesn't like that. You can't why, call Havana that why and did she you gonna call, take why, off Why did you call her a bitch? Because I was mad. We, but we this is somebody you love. Yeah, you're right, you're right. When, when you're mad, I, I let my anger get the best of me. That's all I can say at the end of the day. You I didn't put me. my hands on her, did I? You saying I hit her? No, I said your hands were saying, on her neck. Up. No, were no, they no, not? no, did I me had her hands on her face like, stop, get out of here. Did I you? Was his hands not around your neck? Or did I have my hands on your face? Arnett had his hands on my face, and he had, he did grab me by the neck oh, for a okay. moment. Oh, okay. You see any marks on her neck? Not well, now. This didn't happen today. The day after, it wasn't there no marks on her neck? You're shocking me. Why did, there, what, what, did you not show me did marks she hit me? on did your she body? Come that, hit me? Did was you she not show me marks on your body? Maya, was she swinging on I don't on care me? if she stabbed you. You don't put oh, your hands on a woman. You sound crazy. Hey. If I get stabbed, I'm not Havana came here and took a lie detector test. Oh, we know she ain't lying. She and we first. asked her. Was the sex that you had with Anita and that man that night consensual? She answered no. Do you have any recollection of having a threesome with Anita and that man that night? She answered no. The results came back the same to each question, and it came back that Havana told the truth. So she, she, you knew she you wasn't even to say, I never... Anita came here and she took a lie detector test, and we asked her, did Havana willingly Remove her own pants. You answered yes. You told the truth. Ooh. Did Havana voluntarily lay down in your bed? You answered yes. You told the truth. Did Havana ever verbally or physically resist any sexual activity that night? You answered no. You told the truth. Did Havana lose consciousness at all during sexual activity that night? You answered no to that question. You did not tell the truth. Woo! Oh, that's even worse. Um, Whoa! I look at this as three young women. You weren't drinking that night, so I exclude you. A couple of young women that drank too much. And for the fact that you failed that question, that I passed out at a certain point, tells me you know how wrong you are. I'm disgusted by you, but this will not break me. Maya, you're always gonna be my sister. I love you with all my heart, and to the day I die, that will never change. What about you two? <sighs> I just need time. I do not know what, uh, what happens. Uh, I know 
uh, three friends went out that night, and three friends there will be no longer. I wish you all the luck, and I hope you never make these mistakes again. I called you, Steve, for help because I watch your show all the time. Somebody's gonna watch this and say, you know what, she was brave enough to do that, I can do that too. Do you want to tell your story on The Steve Wilco Show? Visit the link in the description to get my help.